Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity. We uh, today we're gonna switch uh, over from the AWS to uh, more of a, like a pen testing topic and talk about the uh, XSS filter. Uh, we have a, we have talked about the cross site scripting a lot, and we have also seen uh, some of the examples in terms of how do you actually grab the cookies, how do you do the key logging, and all those things uh, into the previous videos. If you have not, then I would highly recommend to check those out. Uh, uh, but in this one we're gonna see uh, in the real world uh, what challenges do we face as a pen tester that uh, sometimes you uh, could find the excesses but you're not able to exploit it because there is some sort of filter and then and this one will uh, go uh, uh, in the phasing process so in the first part I'm just gonna be focusing on the basic bypassable filters and then we'll talk about the more advanced filters as we approach uh, this uh, series uh, in the future uh, uh, please hit the like button if you haven't already and let's move forward so what is the XSS filter now I we all know about the cross-site scripting when there's a input required by the user uh, the application accepts the input and then that input uh, might not get encoded uh, maybe input uh, like in not encoded while storing the database or while reflecting back to the user so like an output encoding and that's when the cross-site scripting attack happens now there are a couple of cheat sheets out there uh, which uh, courtesy to arsenic and uh, other people who has developed the filter evasion cheat sheet uh, of course I'm not gonna go one by one on all of this and talk about it but we'll we'll talk about more of like you know in the real world what we come across and how do we bypass and hopefully talk about those things in a line or two so uh, there are three most common scenarios uh, how the XSS vectors are blocked so for example you are doing pen testing and you are trying to uh, do the cross site scripting attack but your uh, attack is not successful uh, because um, there is an uh, block by the application or something so application has a regex or some sort of validation uh, which blocks your access vector the other thing is it's sanitized so it's not blocking the vector but it's sanitized so uh, sanitized in the sense for example you have a less than ingredient tag in the script and if it finds something it converts that into something else and that's how it's sanitized and the uh, third option is it's filtered or blocked by the browser now you must have seen warning by the browser several times uh, from the chrome and the um, firefox that there's a harmful script running do you still want to continue and then there are also uh, some pre-built cautions uh, in the browser itself so it's blocked by the browser as well so these are the most common scenarios that you would come across uh, of course there is a web application firewall as well which would do the similar thing if fi it finds a pattern and then it blocks it so how do we bypass this black filter right so filters in blacklist mode are most common so uh, the thing that I was talking about the web application firewall so you it act as a antivirus it has bunch of rules or patterns and if it finds the matching pattern that it blocks the uh, input or the payload provided by the user or the attacker and which is most common now the mission here is to detect specific pattern and prevent the malicious malicious behavior uh, again same as the antivirus as soon as it finds something matching it will prevent the attack and as we all know uh, so more accurate the pattern more often they'll prevent their attacks so they'll keep updating these patterns as they come across something else and that's how they'll block it but surprisingly uh, I have I have come to know that many application do not utilize the application firewall and rather they rely on the internal programming framework whatever the library that they're using or the custom uh, I guess validation tool which is not reliant uh, but that's why it makes like an it, it's possible for a pen tester to bypass all these filters so they they will try to gather as many patterns as possible but of course there is always a chance that you might miss out on something right now we'll we'll talk about uh, more and more uh, 
methods on how to bypass those but the most common one uh, that we all know hopefully is about the script tag uh, so if you want to perform a cross-site scripting you will start with the script tag and then put your payload in and and that's what uh, we have seen and and of course that's why the team the applications or the firewall will have a pattern or a or a validation that if it finds something like this it first this is the first factor that like you know it will block now filters could be weak and do not cover all the possible cases and that's why it's bypassable so you must have heard term of whitelisting versus blacklisting in the in the security wall and we always 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 recommend to do whitelisting rather than blacklisting because you may not be able to come across or gather all the possible scenarios how the attacker is going to attack so you blacklist those things but what you do know is what are the what are the valid things to take uh, like you know take an input f uh, in the application um, as a user so what can you expect from the user what can you expect from the valid user legitimate user so that you can whitelist things so that's why we always recommend whitelisting or blacklisting but here f uh, the filters that the team uh, might have developed the application might have may not cover all the possible scenarios and that's how we can bypass so let's see some of the examples of course uh, I want to keep this video uh, sh on the shorter side because we are just going to start it and uh, of course in the future exam in the future series of these videos we'll take a deep dive and look at some uh, more examples but let's see some examples to start off this uh, uh, this week and uh, hopefully we'll progress in the coming weeks with more advanced examples so the first one is script alert uh, script now the things you must have noticed here is we are not writing um, just the first letter in the capital or the entire thing in capital or small letter we are going like you know s with the capital r with the capital and p with the capital so sometime filter only blocks script tag if it finds either all capital or non capital or just the first letter capital so that's how you can bypass this one the second uh, option is you just write the, you do not mention the end script tag and surprisingly you would know that many applications do that they would only block the script tag if it finds the matching end tag and if you do not provide it it might just allow that and this would still execute uh, your payload uh, the third option is uh, you write the script tag but of course not just a script you also enter uh, like a random string in there so uh, this way uh, of course the filter wouldn't know if this is a valid this is just a script that you are trying to insert but then it also encounters this random uh, keyword and it thinks okay this is not a payload pattern that I'm I'm looking for and it will allow the uh, payload uh, the fourth one is you write the script and you do not write like you know and the less than sign on the same you and uh, you have the new line character and then you insert the payload and then uh, that's how like you know sometimes you can bypass the filter as well and and this actually has worked several times for me uh, this one is quite interesting uh, so here what you're doing is you are writing a two script tag but you are writing a subset you're writing one script inside the another script so that's how this is again a pattern which not all the filters have and then last thing is you are entering a null character uh, between the script so of course it's a null character so the application wouldn't process it and it would actually f uh, treat this as a script tag but then the filters wouldn't know uh, there's a script tag because there is a null character between and that that's how you can uh, bypass the filter so we saw some of the basic samples and I'm sure you must have come across this uh, filters and uh, uh, this strings in the other cheat sheet as well but I just want to give you a highlight like why the filter doesn't work always what is the blacklisting versus whitelisting and these are some of these maybe a good uh, thing to know uh, for an interview as well if you are going to appear or want to uh, go for a pen tester position in the future 
but of course in future we'll we'll talk about some more uh, advanced examples on how do we bypass the uh, this filters and other firewalls and all those things so uh, that's it from me uh, here uh, thank you for your time i'll see you guys next time and please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more videos all right i'll see you guys next week thank you